Good evening, everybody. I hope you're all very well indeed. That was a little introduction from the great Julian Bream, who unfortunately died yesterday. He was aged 87, so he had a very good innings. And in case you don't know who he was, he was a classical guitarist, an English classical guitarist, and a very famous one, and I think is largely, together with John Williams, responsible for the popularity of the classical guitar in the 20th century mm -hmm. and into the 21st century. Anyway, that was a piece by Benjamin Britten, written for Julian Bream and played by Julian Bream. It's a little bit beyond me currently, and so I thought I'd just play it to you in tribute to him. And somebody reminded me that he had died today, in fact, told me about it, I didn't know. And it's very sad, but uh, a celebration of his wonderful guitar playing. And if you're not or haven't heard him play, there's lots of stuff on YouTube that's amazing. So, there it is. I don't think that we'll be playing any Julian Bream this evening. In fact, I know we won't because, like I say, well, it's the wrong guitar and, well, it takes a lot of practice. And the thing with classical music is, and a few people have asked me to play a few classical pieces, you've got to really get it perfectly bang on, otherwise it can start to sound pretty horrid. With these songs and things, there's a lot open to interpretation. You can change the odd note with your voice, you know, you don't learn, need to learn the melody exactly as long as you're on key. You can change the way that you play a certain chord at a certain time, and you can get away with a lot more. So during the week I practice these songs, but if it was a classical thing, you know, I'd have to spend hours each day practicing them, uh, which of course I don't have at the moment, because uh, I'm on game drive most of the time. Cheers. I hope you've all got a nice drink, and you're ready for this evening's uh, soiree. I do not see my wife chatting yet, I'm not sure if that is because my wife is not yet home. It probably is. Anyway, I think we're almost ready to go. Just do a little sound check. Sounds pretty good, I think. Okay. Well, tonight's selection of songs, five of them as always, I actually haven't planned an encore this evening, so if there is one, I shall have to think quickly on my feet, are relatively contemplative. I don't know why they are. It just turned out that way. And in fact, as I was practicing them last night, I thought to myself, I wonder if I should change it up a bit. But I thought, no, we'll just go with this and see what happens. The first one is a Paul Simon number, and it also comes from the Graceland album, and it's called Under African Skies. And I sang this once at a fireside chat for Safari Live, oh, four years ago, maybe? I think it was probably that long ago. And it's about, well, the first verse is about Joseph Shabalala, who died last year, and he was the leader of the Ladysmith Black Mambazo, multi-award-winning, Grammy-award-winning Maskande group from South Africa. They sang beautiful choral a cappella music in Zulu most of the time, and they were basically put on the world map, I suppose, by Paul Simon during the Graceland phase, and their song on the album, they contributed to a number of them, but Homeless was the famous one. Anyway, the first verse is this one about Joseph Shabalala, who lived in a place called Ladysmith, uh, near, it's not really near anything except Ladysmith, and it's in what was the heart of, or is the heart of KwaZulu-Natal now. And then the second verse I didn't know anything about until I looked it up today. And on the album, it's sung by Linda Ronstadt, of course, who's a very famous singer in America, as opposed to like an... I don't think she was much of a songwriter, but she's done a huge amount of singing in various genres very successfully. And she sang it on the album, and apparently the second verse is about her. And it's just a nice, cheerful, gentle song about Africa and living under African skies. And I hope my guitar's not going to do that again. 
Okay, here we go. Thank you. Um, I'm going to have to refresh this thing. I think it's still going out live, but I can't see any of the chat, and I think that's important in case you want to ask a question. If I disappear, I'll come back. Maybe this is dangerous. Maybe I should just load it on another page. One second. There we go. It says I'm live. That's good. No, I don't want to see an advert. Thank you very much. Right, there we go. 
Hello, you all. I can now see you if you've got any questions. Ah, here we are. You're all here. You're all giving me very kind hand claps. Thank you very much for that. And that was, of course, Under African Skies by Paul Simon. I'm not seeing my wife uh, saying anything just yet, so I'm not sure that she's, um, she's there yet. She must still be in the car. No, no, there she is. <laughs> Apparently Byron Sarau, who many of you will know, wants to know if I can play Eagle Eye Cherry. No, Byron, I can't. I've never heard of him. All right, the next song, given that there don't seem to be any questions. No, Kathy, I'm not taking requests. Um, I can't. I need to practice these songs before... <laughs> before the weekend. I can't just take requests. Uh, you can certainly send them in during the week and I'll see what I can do, but I make absolutely no promises. Need some Pearl Jam, buddy, says Gareth. Uh, thank you, Gareth. Okay, right. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is quite interesting because it was written by the drummer of my extremely unsuccessful university band called The She spelt S-I-D-H-E. That's a story that um, doesn't bear repeating and certainly didn't net us an enormous record contract. But this drummer, who was a good drummer, but a brilliant lyricist, has gone on to, I think he's writing at the moment for a number of games. I don't know how it all works, but he writes for games, he writes graphic novels, just a tremendous imagination and a great wordsmith huge reader, you know, devoured anything with words and it is reflected in the way he writes. Anyway, but, I mean, this is written sort of 25 years ago and it's pretty relevant even now. It's not about South Africa, it's about intolerance, I suppose, and I guess that goes for anywhere around the world. And this particular song is called Jerusalem, where I suppose we might call it a melting pot of intolerance in many respects, that part of the world. And so it doesn't take any sides. It doesn't lean on any side of uh, whatever divides there are. It just makes mention of the fact that we don't seem to be able to get on with each other as human beings. So it's called Jerusalem, written by Alistair Cunningham. He wrote the words and I wrote the music for it. I'd say about 25 years ago now, which was a very long time. All right, here we go, Jerusalem. with 
the found and the lost Dancing forever in eternity To the sounds of the crescent, the star and the cross in Jerusalem, in Disappeared forever It's a saw that stands alone And bloodied on this night A pillar of wrath For the sinner and the saint Who will continue to struggle on For a hundred thousand nights or more In Jerusalem In Jerusalem In Jerusalem In Jerusalem That is Jerusalem by Alistair Cunningham and moi. Anushka, you want to know what song I enjoy playing the most? I think it, uh, it really depends on the day, really. I love smashing my electric guitar with a recording of some Pink Floyd that I really enjoy doing or some Eric Clapton, that sort of stuff. But it really does depend on the day. Sometimes I enjoy playing rock songs, sometimes I enjoy playing folk songs, sometimes classical music. It just depends on my mood. It's a little bit like me asking you, I suppose, um, what's your favorite song? And a lot of people really can't answer that question because they've got lots of favorite songs. So that's my answer to that question. Any others? Do I know any Leonard Cohen or Gordon Lightfoot songs? Um, Cornel? Cornel? Uh, I don't. I mean, I know, I know of them. I don't play any currently. Sorry. Zoe Dawn wants to know if I know any country music. Uh, no, I don't know any country music, um, Zoe, but I could learn some. Um, I do like some country music. <laughs> Okay, on to the next one. The next one is definitely a sad song. Just gonna put it out there. Um, I'm not sure that it has a particularly cheerful bent to it. I suppose it does to a certain extent. It was written in 1993 by Johnny Clegg. And it was written during a 
very violent time in South Africa's history, uh, possibly even more violent than our present, which is pretty violent. And I don't know if you know how much about South Africa you know, but we're basically held to ransom by associations of taxis. And these are minibus taxis, so they're not taxis like a New York cab, they are minibus taxis. And without them, the economy would collapse because that's how everybody gets to work, because the government has failed dismally to provide any form of public transport. And these are all independent taxi associations. And they're basically like little mafia families, not little mafia families, big mafia families, and they get very violent. And one of Johnny Clegg's dancers was unfortunately killed in the crossfire during some uh, taxi violence. His name was Ntowazewai or Dudu Ntlovu, and he used to dance with Johnny Clegg all the time. And after his death during this mindless taxi violence, he wrote this song called The Crossing. And the words go in the chorus, Osieza, Osieza, we are coming, we are coming. Sizofiga where Baba no Ma, we're going to arrive where mother and father are now. La poso beka pansi gonke ugutlopega. There we will lay down all the things that trouble us. Sio wela la pesheya kulezin taba zimnyama. Is it not the most beautiful language? We will cross over the dark mountains. La poso beka pansi gonke ugutlopega. There we will lay down all of the things that trouble us. <coughs> and so, the crossing. Let us hope that Julian Bream has made the crossing to where the other great musician Johnny Clegg has, uh, well, prepared the way, shall we say, uh, a year ago.
song that. I um, sang it at a funeral once, a very sad funeral, where, well, not that there are any cheerful funerals, of a chap here who unfortunately died of malaria. Young guy, he was only in his about 25 or so. Um, but it's just the most appropriate song to sing at that sort of occasion. This is not one of those occasions, but that doesn't make it a less appropriate song because it's a nice song. Okay. Any questions? There's a broken heart coming up there. Sorry about that. Um, thank you, Aunt Christine. Thank you, all of you, being very kind to me and my dear wife, of course. Uh, Aaron, I am not ever going to do a cover of Hotel California. No. The reason is that everyone has done a cover of Hotel California. Uh, Sweet Caroline is in the same category of song. Brown Eyed Girl... Same category of song, no. I will never do those ones. There are thousands of beautiful recordings of those songs, some very bad ones too, and I don't want to be caught on either side of that divide. Thank you. Now, we are going to do the next song. This song uh, has an interesting title, and it's by an American artist who is... Um, He's not very well known in many parts of the world, but I think in his niche, he's extremely well known and extremely well thought of. And his name is Ryan Adams. So not Brian Adams, Ryan Adams. And he's a singer-songwriter who does largely sort of folk rocky type stuff. I don't want to try and categorize him because he does all sorts of different things. And this particular song is a very beautiful song called La Cienaga. La Cienega. I'm probably pronouncing it horribly. And I had no idea what La Cienega meant or what it was, and so I looked it up this morning before Game Drive, and I found out that it's a Spanish name for a girl. I had worked that out myself. What I hadn't worked out, however, is that it is in fact a word for swamp or marsh. Now, I don't know why you would choose to call your daughter Swamp, or Marsh, and uh, apparently it's quite a popular Spanish name. So if you happen to be called La Cienega, and um, you don't know why you're called Swamp or Marsh, or perhaps you do, maybe you'd like to tell us. Anyway, it's called La Cienega Smiled. And again, it's, um, it's quite a sad song, I suppose, in so much as uh, the guy really doesn't get a break from this girl. All right, here we go.
One breaks my body and the other breaks my soul. I see Anna just smiles and waves goodbye. Thank you, Zoe Dawn. I'll check him out. Um, Dave Carter, Jimmy Webb. No, David, I'm afraid I'm not. Um, perhaps I should look them up too. You're all being very kind. Thank you. As is my wife on the chat, of course. Okay. Who would I like to perform with? Tuberit, tuberits. That's a really nice question. Who would I like to perform with? I would love to perform with David Gilmour. I would love to perform with maybe Eric Clapton, although I would probably be just a bit too intimidating because it's he's not really my genre. Um, oh, there are lots of people. Too many to mention, but at the moment, David Gilmour would be the kind of obvious... Um, Obvious answer. Paul Simon. Love Paul Simon. I think he's the most amazing songwriter. So I'd like to play with him too. I always, um, I sometimes fantasize about these things, you know, uh, ending up in some kind of taking a safari for a celebrity singer and their guitarist is taken ill with malaria or something like that. And they go, what do we do? We just don't know anyone else in the country who can play the guitar. James, do you know anybody? And I go, well... <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it so happens that I do. And then we play an enormous concert. And I do very well, obviously. Steal the show. Oh, right here. Now, this song is going to be our, what has become our traditional one with orchestral backing. And <laughs> Kirsten is going to laugh, laugh very much at this. She says the audio is soft. Is it too soft? Is it too soft? I'll just ask that question. I'm not sure how I can bring it up, actually. I'm just going to see if I can raise it slightly, maybe. Oh, these things are so difficult. No, we don't want that. That looks okay. Properties. No, not that one. So many instructions. 
It should be fine. Yeah, I'll bang it up a bit and see if that makes a difference. I hope it's not going to peak now. I've got another message. I'm just going to tell me whether it's too soft or whether it's okay. It's soft while you've been talking, but it should be okay now. Okay, right, so this next song. This next song I wrote while I was here at Juma. The um, Now You're Softer. I don't know. I, 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 I'm hoping everyone can cope. I wrote this song while I was at Juma. And, right, there we go. Oh, Linda, you're reading lips now. Yeah, no, this is not good. Uh, you really shouldn't have to read my lips. Okay, you say it's a bit better. Good. All right, I'll just stick into the microphone. So, this song I wrote while I was here, but I started writing it before I got here. And it was in a forested area, just un in the sort of foothills of the Drakensberg Mountains close to Hutzbreit. And the previous project I'd been involved with had collapsed horribly, and I was uh, at a loose end, and somebody said, a very famous artist friend of mine, well, relatively famous artist friend of mine called Emily Lamb said, why don't you come and stay with me? I'm painting in this forest, and you can just chill out, do what you need to do. I'll paint, you write some songs. And one night, I heard a wood owl calling. And I don't know if you've ever heard a wood owl calling. It's a very nice call. It doesn't actually feature in this song. But the wood owl has got a lovely song. And it just inspired this particular song. But I only ever finished it when I was here. And unfortunately, my poor, my poor colleagues had to listen to me repeating it again and again and again because I re recorded it in my room. And I mean, we were living cheek by jowl at the time. And so anybody who had an afternoon or a morning off got mostly the chorus of the song blethered at them very loudly for lengthy periods. And so I thank them. And as a result, every single time I ever took the guitar out after that, my wife would say, well, she wasn't my wife then, of course, she would say, <laughs> say play owls, play owls, and then think she was very funny, which, of course, she is. Okay. Here we go. Owls, my dear. I hope you enjoy this. Again, the orchestral stuff was written this week, so I hope it comes out all right. Um, everything is now twisted. Oh, never mind. Okay, here we go. Owls. seem to be playing wait on my iPhone yes now play why are we oh that's why okay small trouble never mind here we go okay I'm ready now <laughs> sorry about that song for her love It floats up gently as he circles the moon He folds his wings and dives for home He folds his wings and dives for home Silent wing beats barely ripple the night air her eyes shining like two distant lonely stars He swoops down gently to the branch where she sits 
and joins his heart to hers. He joins his heart to hers. I catch a scent in the cool of the dawn. Your eyes float with the morning star. I touch your flesh with my spirit's lonely voice. I hear you. Dance through the mist. The owl is calling your name. The owl is calling your name. Patchwork moonlight reaches through the dark leaves. A sweet song now, a haunting duet of old of new. Of birth of life, a song older than the sky, a song older than the sky. A sparrow wakes in the embers of sunrise, feathers ruffle in the cold morning air, a spider folds up a dew sparkling web. Catch a scent in the cool of the dawn. Your eyes float with the morning star. I touch your flesh with my spirit's lonely voice. I hear you dance through the mist. The owl is whistling your name. The owl is calling your name. Chase the dark, stars follow the moon. The truth I told you, lying scattered, running from the light. Love streaming from the moon, gold dripping from the velvet sky. Ghosts fly in the ether, spirits in the wind. A man is filled with a fearsome vision of the coming of the night. tapping your feet. Well, don't tap them too hard. You might do yourself an injury. That would be no good at all. Uh, righty. 
Uh, now there's just lots of clapping. Thank you very much. Very kind. Very kind. Thank you. And I remember the song, Thank You, Coast Rider. Yeah, I know it could have been a little bit better, but I, I really quite like it. I'm not sure if anyone else did. And which classical poet other than Shakespeare would you like to meet? I don't, didn't see who asked that question. Uh, classical poet? I'm not big on poetry. Yeah, I do actually now. I'd, I'd like to meet William Butler Yeats. I like some of his poems. Yes, I do. I do, I do. Okay, shall we have an encore? Um, I'm not sure what encore to do, actually. Oh, we said we'd do some Eric Clapton, didn't we? Okay, let's do some Eric Clapton. Uh, most of his songs are about women's inhumanity to man, and this one is no different. I don't think he wrote this one, uh, but it's certainly one that he made very famous. Here we go. Last song of the evening. Please enjoy. everybody very much for joining me this evening and my dear wife Kirsten who is sitting in Johannesburg as we speak she rushed home from work to be with us thank you very much take you on game drive no Gareth I have never tried to take the, uh, the guitar on game drive um, I don't know if anyone would particularly appreciate it especially not Tundi the Leopard and um, now everything's just going so fast 
And James explained the picture on the wall. Um, I actually don't know about the picture on the wall. It's one that was here in the final control room that I just put there because it was better than the grey wall. I don't know who took it. It's one of the... Uh, I think it's actually Karula, if I'm not mistaken. It might be. Kirsten, have you answered this question already? Kirsten might know. She'll tell us. She might. Yes. Yes, no, yes. Anyway, uh, it's a leopard from here. And the little soft toys are quite cute. This is a particular favorite. Uh, it is a wildebeest. And uh, it, I think, comes from Kenya. And it should be migrating right now, but isn't safe here, not being fought over by lions and crocodiles. Oh, thank you, Kirsten. You, it's apparently Shongile. Uh, my very favorite leopard from this area, Shongile. Gosh, that's a little bit of twinge of sadness floating through my heart. Anyway, okay, we're going to pack it in now. Thank you very much for joining me. I will see you, well, I don't know if we're going to do it next week. I'll be back in Johannesburg. I probably need about two weeks to try and practice um, some new songs and arrange some new songs, but if I manage to do it in time, then we'll have a concert next Saturday. Watch social media, and please would you like and subscribe. Subscribe mainly, it really does help both Kirsten and I if you hit the subscribe button. Thank you very much. Mostly thank you for watching, and thank you to those of you who have been super chatting away. That's extremely, extremely kind of you. Um, I really do enjoy these things, and I really appreciate the time uh, that you give me and the consideration. Thank you, and good night. Moment while we end the stream.